A very good morning to you. It is, uh, what are we talking about? Wednesday, the 9th of February, 2022. And if you were listening to the show yesterday, you'll know that we were talking to Les Stewart, who drew my attention to the fact that this week is, in fact, uh, Children's Mental Health Week. And I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by Liam Stowell from Mezica, who's going to tell us more about it. Good morning to you, Liam. Good morning. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Who'd have thought, you know, if you went back to, uh, say for the sake of argument, when I was a kid, 1970s, I know I hate to admit it, but yeah, there you go. The idea that, um, you know, there would be a children's mental health week, no, not a chance of it, not a chance of it, because people think, well, ah, kids, yeah, you know what I mean, just, you know, tell them to kind of sort themselves out. That's how it used to be years ago. It's moved on a lot since then, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it has, and I think it's had a lot of attention over recent weeks, recent years as well. So I think it it has grown in terms of the awareness of when children behave and act in certain ways of what that means. And, and often we attribute that to to a mental health difficulty or another form of difficulty. So I think it has been, it's been important um, that we understand things in, in different ways and yeah. all people, but especially young people get the right support that they deserve yeah. and that they need in hope that they don't have these difficulties for long periods of time or, or into adulthood because, you know, we always say early intervention is the best thing to do. Well, well let me just get a, an understanding of this. When we talk about children, what, are we, what age are we going down to here in terms of kids that have actually gone seeking medical advice because the condition's not good? Well, in theory, it's from zero years old. So oh. that there's, there's services within Mercy Care and across the, the UK, um, which is known as, um, well, locally we have one called BABS, which is the uh, sort of baby infant bonding service. So that's where, whether it's a parent and a child and they're struggling to have that bond and attachment for, for various different reasons, it could be that, and it's something we were talking about earlier on, a, a traumatic birth. Yeah. So sometimes uh, a parent will struggle to have that attachment to the child because they've had a, a really bad physical or sometimes a, uh, a mental reaction to that, whether it's to do with the hormone imbalance or, or, or so on and so forth. So there can be difficulties with it. Mm. So a mental health service can support those attachments early on right. and help then not only just the, the parents, whether it's the mom or dad or partners or both. And then obviously the idea is that early intervention mm. will help that child's mental health from, from a very early age. Is it um, fair to say that the problem is worse now than it has ever been, or is it that just we understand it more and that these problems have always been there, for example, since when I was a child? It's just that we know more about it. What would you say the take is on that? I, s I suppose it's it's a difficult one to look back on it and almost say, well, you, you can always think of it in your childhood of, of, of young people that maybe acted or behaved in a certain way, and you think... Or would they now be under mental health service or would they maybe be diagnosed with such a thing? And I suppose it's difficult to say and sometimes that can be a bit unhelpful to sort of retrospectively look at it. And I think for me, the focus almost needs to be on the here and now to sort of say, well, you know, things could have been different. Could have they been better? I suppose we'll never know that. And sometimes yeah. we can get a bit lost in in trying to focus on the sort of causes of, of, of things and we almost get lost then with how we can support an individual within no. it. So, you know, we are where we are. And I think, you know, definitely my experience of working across the, the sort of spectrum of children's mental health services. So I've worked in inpatient services, I've worked in secure inpatient services, I've worked with youth offenders, I've worked in community mm -hmm. mental health services, and now in crisis mental health services for young people. So I've got that sort of knowledge across the, across yeah. the board. And I think we've definitely helped a lot of people along the way. And I think sometimes that understanding of them in the context of their life history, and that's not necessarily to give them a diagnosable mental health problem. Yeah. Sometimes the understanding is really validating and really helpful for, mm. for a parent or for a young person. And, and, and that can be just as helpful as anything else, really. Yeah. Is it, is it the case that, I mean, I, I've come across this, that people who suspect that they've got some kind of, you know, issue with their mental well-being, think that it's just them, that they are something exceptional and that perhaps maybe they withdraw and they don't want to kind of go and speak to anybody because they think there's something wrong with them. Do you come across that? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, especially in young people, I think because 
they don't have that necessarily cognitive um, functioning because you're young and, and you don't understand. To realise that you're not, it's yeah. not unusual that you feel this way. Children tend to live in the moment. So their sort of concepts of time and their concepts of how they sort of fit in with the wider systems and society, you don't tend to get so you're older. So you tend mm. to not understand your own emotions. So you show your emotions. And we all do this. But we don't necessarily see it as being depressed or angry or anxious as a child. Yeah. So, for example, you may have a, you know, a young person in school that is constantly being very, very angry and they may be throwing chairs and things. But, but actually, that could be an underlying anxiety. Right. So it could be that they're struggling in, in a lesson where they say that's maths, for example, but they don't have the, the awareness, the self-awareness or the confidence necessarily to sort of say, I'm struggling here. So they, they will sometimes act and behave in a way to get out of that lesson because the, uh, see. Yeah. and that could be for reasons where they don't necessarily have a trusting relationship in adults or it could be like I say simple as they don't understand but they're not mm. confident like I say to say that so you sort of learn what we call maladaptive strategies to avoid the thing that you struggle with right that that makes sense to me because I mean I um when I was at school I hated school absolutely loathe I mean it, that, that's nothing because there was a problem with the school it was just the way I learned couldn't be, I couldn't concentrate on the fact that somebody would be stood at a blackboard saying blah blah blah. It was just it just wasn't going in. And whereas I would sit and tolerate it, I get this. It makes sense to me that somebody who is going through that thinking I can't abide this anymore would undertake something which is seemingly destructive, but it was their mechanism to get out of that situation. Is that, that's what you're getting at, really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think we have the almost this the stereotypical things like say. When we're talking about anxiety, you might think of almost that introverted person that's avoiding things, sat on their own, like don't have the confidence to do things. But actually, it's just as anxiety provoking for because it might be a young person who actually they have lots of friends. When they're with the friends, they're very confident. They may play sports or mm. whatnot. But mm. actually, in individual circumstances, in certain lessons, they don't have confidence in. So they act in different ways rather than being that sort of introvert and distancing mm. themselves from people that like, like you say, they, they act out in a different way. Yeah. And, and that's, it's, it's one of the same thing. It might be called a different thing, but it, it's once again, it's that strategy of avoiding something that you find difficult. Mm. And we all do that. And it's not necessarily to say it's a, a mental health problem with almost a capital M, mm. but it's an understanding of your own mental health, isn't it? I think sometimes mental health gets understood in a very sort of negative context. We yes. only ever say it when it's sort of something that's deemed to be going wrong. It still has that taboo about it that, you know, with a, certainly with a lot of people, mental health, you know, they, mm. they do think of the thinking of the past, what have you. And it's not because, I mean, it's, it's, I think what people, this is my kind of reading of it, is that mental health is no different than your physical health. You know what I mean? And no one would turn around and say, oh, you know, look at him, he's, there's something wrong with him because his physical health isn't good. You know what I mean? He looks all right, but his physical health isn't good. And it's the same thing, you know what I mean? Because you have to kind of keep on top of all aspects of who you are, don't you? We do. And I, and I think sometimes with, with mental health, we can fall into the trap of, of oversimplifying things as well. So mm. when we call something anxiety or depression or, or so on and so forth, it, it almost sort of pigeonholes you into sort of that thing. So you might have someone that you've met who is like anxious or depressed about something. Mm. But actually it's... it's more often than not very unique to the individual. Mm. And it's on circumstances. So you may sort of have the a similar type of effect. So say if you're if you're depressed, it might be that you're sitting in bed all the time or you're feeling yeah, down yeah. or you're or you're not eating and, and so on and so forth. But one person might be as a result of they've they've lost their a parent or yeah. a sibling. Mm. Someone else it might be because they're getting bullied in school. So how you resolve them Mm. It's entirely different. So the bereavement process, you would say, is a fairly natural reaction. And, and same with the bullying process. Mm. However, one, the bullying, you can probably do some more about than you can do with loss of a parent yeah, for a yeah. child. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of what support you put in place, then it can be totally different. And sometimes that's the difference and they're almost the uniqueness that we have in services that both young people in front of us are presenting as depressed. However, how you resolve that 
is entirely different. Yeah, sure. It's, it's just bespoke, isn't it? Everything's mm. got to be dealt with that way. All right, we're going to talk more in a few minutes. Time. Liam Stoll from Mersey Care is with us. It is National Children's uh, sorry, Mental Health Week. And if you want to mind, find out more details about this, just remind us, is there a website that's accompanying this? Yeah, so if you go into Mersey Care's website, there's a, a list of all the, the services for children and young people across the area, and there's, there's lots of helpful information on there um, right. and stuff. So, yeah. We'll talk, more. we'll talk more in a sec. Uh, it's Liverpool Live, back after the teardrop explodes next. It's a day at the cafe. Oh, it's Julian Copeland, boys, here on Liverpool Live, and it's just coming up towards half past 11. I'm in mean, the company of Liam Stell from Mersey Care. We're talking about Children's National Children's Mental Health Week. I've probably given it the wrong title there, but it's something in the ballpark, isn't it? So tell us about some of the things, some of the... The, the resources that are available for people who may want to take advantage of what's on offer. So I think it's important to understand how mental health services locally are set up because I think there's sometimes a bit of confusion. So I work for CAMS Crisis Team, which is obviously the, the sort of top end of stuff when mm. young people have sadly either tried to take their own life or there's been some quite serious sort of self-injury and, and, and things like that. But mental health services... I think it's often understood as almost just CAMS. However, how they're sort of set up is is it's a, it's a vast array of services and, and CAMS only makes up quite a small part of it, actually, in terms of how they're commissioned. So I work over at what we're known as Mid Mersey, so that's Warrington, St. Helens, yeah, Halton yeah. and Nosley. And as part of each individual CAMS team, how it used to be set up in a tiered system, mm. which was tier two and tier three CAMS. However, now we work towards something I've done for the past few years, something called the I Thrive model, which is where services come and support children at the at the right time that's for them. Mm. So to almost go back to something that I mentioned before, of say if you've got a, a young person who's being bullied and they might actually be con conveying with some quite severe difficulties. Mm. However, the thing that's going to get their mental health better at that moment in time might be as simple as remove the bully yeah mm. or, or something you know to, not to oversimplify but but that ha and then it might be mental health services come in to place after it because then they can sort of start to deal with the trauma that's been as a result of that bullying mm. sometimes if you try to say do therapy and it's still ongoing it's going to be ineffective mm. because the trauma or the thing that's causing the difficulty is still ongoing so it will be unfair on the child because it almost makes it seem like there's something wrong with them Mm. rather than what's going on with them. Yeah, yeah. So say locally we have, um, so in St. Helens, for example, there is Bernardo's um, in Warrington, there's St. Joseph's, there's Listening Air at places, there is We Are With You, which is sort of the young person's drug and alcohol services. So I say, depending on where you live, they all have different yeah. different names, yeah, but yeah. they are part of the CAM system. I don't think everyone knows that. Right. So when a, a referral comes through to us, and we may signpost it elsewhere. I think it's, it's one of those guys. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's often understood as a reject from our service, but it's not. It it just it's what used to be called tier two cams. It just how mm. it ha how happens to be under a different place now, whether that's yeah. Bernardo's or a different counselling service or Cooth. Mm. Mm. Um, so it's there's just different things of how it works. So it's still part of the same thing. There isn't services that have been lost as a result. And actually, there's been some really good services like in St Helens recently we've just started working with the YMCA right. which is a, it's a brand new thing and they're going to do some youth work with mm. individuals that are in crisis as well so almost at the top end of stuff because mm. we've realised well, what actually can cause a, a real positive impact on young people is stuff socially so we can do sort of therapy based things or whether it's medication for sort of individuals and the sort of traditional mental mm. health things that we have but actually if you just do that on, on your own often it, it's not going to last very long it's not a long-term solution yeah. so we want young people to integrate into other things whether that's a sports club whether that's a drama club whether that's cadets fire, fire cadets th th there's lots of different things that can mm. be and that it, it could be as, as simple as just going to the cinema mm -hmm. do you know what i mean for some young person that's been stuck in the room for 12 months yeah. just going out getting out yeah, uh, so, go out and have a coffee, something like that. It, All of these things have such a th therapeutic effect, don't they? It, exactly. And, and so the idea of this model now is to work very closely with education, 
So it was part of the NHS five-year forward plan, and that's why locally we have the mental health school teams as well. Mm. So once again, they're teams that are integrated into schools and have practitioners assigned to schools, that early intervention. So once again, so it's not seen as that traditional CAMS brand. Mm. However, it's still mental health support. Mm. So it's still one of the same sort of family of services that help supporting people. So it's just changing. And I think because we've maybe not got it out there as much, and this is part of it, to try and understand what we do and actually a hell of a lot of good work that we are doing yeah, yeah. to try and prevent people getting to camps. So I can understand there'll be frustrations in that because at times it's difficult for us as professionals to navigate because there's constantly new services yeah, sure. coming up. But the idea, obviously, over the coming months and years is the more we can do things like this in terms of getting yeah. people to understand us, I think, you know, people will start to feel better as a result of it. Yeah. Well, listen, Liam, it's, it's always good to speak to you and hopefully we can catch up again with you in a, in a few weeks' time just to give us an update and, you know, advice to people. And we would encourage people, if you are listening or if you're watching this by our social media, that if you do want to get more information about uh, the services that Liam and the guys over there at Mercy Care offer, we'll make sure that we put that information up on, on our social media pages and, of course, information that we get here, we'll put it on the air as well. So uh, just finally... The then if there's uh, an immediate resource, an online resource that people can go on to, go on to straight away, if you could just let us know what that is again, please. Lee. Yeah, so if you just go into Mersey Care and, and type in CAMS or children's mental health, the, the things come up. And, and depending on where you live, every CAM service has a duty offer. So if you the numbers are on there, so if you ring your local CAMS, whether you're open or not, they'll be able to give you advice yeah. and that'll be signposting you to the right place. So, so don't hesitate to contact them. Brilliant. Liam, thanks very much indeed for that. Okay, uh, it is uh, Liverpool Live, just comes up to 25 to midday on a Wednesday. Still to come, we're going to be talking with Rachel Ashley in the next hour of this show with our special guest, Paul Birchall.